Buenos dias, muchachos y muchachas. <laughs> I'm Tom, your friendly teacher, and uh, <clears throat> we'll be doing it online today. Uh, <clears throat> if anyone has a question, please let me know. Okay? I don't know if you've ever done online learning before. I have, and it's not always the same as in person. Uh, I've done some online learning, like I said, but never teaching, so you're getting a newbie today. So <clears throat> we are at the end of lesson 11, lección 11, and we had a reading, el trabajo manual. So are there any questions uh, about that reading? They give you some vocabulary, but uh, you may not know all of the words that are not furnished. No questions? Okay. Um, will I be able to hear them? Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to read it aloud for you. So I want you to uh, follow along. This is page 254. 254. El trabajo manual. Nuestro desprecio del trabajo manual se acentúa más de día en día y, sin embargo, en él está la salvación. Él solo puede engendrar el sentimiento de la fraternidad, el cual exige el contacto de unos hombres con otros. Así, la guerra civilizada, que parece más noble porque coloca a gran distancia a los que matan y a los que mueren, es una guerra profundamente egoísta y salvaje porque impide que se muestre la piedad. El que lucha desde lejos mata siempre que, acier que acierta a matar. El que lucha cuerpo a cuerpo, unas veces mata y otras veces se compadece y perdona. And this is a selection from Ángel Ganivet and his work of Idearium Español. And you can see his, that he was born in 255, <clears throat> who do we see? Whom do we see? <clears throat> we see Fidel Castro with his subordinates. Uh, we'll read the caption of the photo. Revolución, Fidel Castro, joven abogado y político, fue desterrado por el gobierno de Fulgencio Batista pero en 1956 desembarcó en la provincia de Oriente en Cuba con los partidarios de su movimiento 26 de julio. Después de dos años de acción guerrillera, entró triunfante en La Habana y estableció en Cuba un gobierno socialista. Nacido en 1927, Fidel tenía 31 años cuando llegó al poder. Bajo su dirección se llevó a cabo una extensa reforma agraria. Now I'd like for you to ask questions about the photo or the text that goes with it. Anyone have a question? Okay, there will be a test. <laughs> Ask now. <laughs> okay.
Okay, there are preguntas at the bottom of that page about the reading. <clears throat> ¿Qué despreciamos en el mundo moderno? What does that mean in English? Anyone want to venture a, a translation? Anyone want to answer in Spanish? ¿Qué despreciamos? Go back to the other side of the page. We have nine people and no one has a question. How timid. How utterly timid. <clears throat> well, I'll give you the answer to number one. Que despreciamos en el mundo moderno? Despreciamos el trabajo manual. We despise manual work, manual labor. <clears throat> And question two, ¿se aumenta este desprecio de día en día? Does our dis dislike of manual work increase day by day? I think I'm giving you too much help. Go to number five. ¿Por qué parece más noble la guerra civilizada? Why is civilized war seem more noble than primitive war, we should add, probably? Well, we're going to have to figure out a way to get participation up here. So uh, <clears throat> maybe I'll come up with some devices for you, be they online or otherwise. Go back up to the uh, photo at the top of page 255. Do you remember when Castro took over in Cuba? Were you uh, cognizant of those events in that day? How did it seem to you? We were barely out of our, um, <clears throat> barely into our teen years then, I believe. Well, just on a personal note, I'll tell you a little story. <clears throat> I was in a Kroger store, and on the shelf where the sugar was, there were some plain brown bags packed with sugar. I don't know whether they had been rebagged or something or what, <clears throat> but I had a, I had a, I had a hunch that, you know, maybe this was sugar that was bootlegged from Cuba, so. What did I do? I called the FBI and told them. <laughs> I never got any feedback, <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> that's for that. Now, <clears throat> Jackie, I believe, has emailed you a PDF of Lexion Dosi. Does anyone not have that yet? Speak now. So I can assume that everyone has it. Okay. Do you have any audio? Do you have audio? Um, it's a little bit behind. A little bit, okay. Mm -hmm. Do you have five seconds? 
Oh, five seconds. Okay. <clears throat> okay, we'll prepare for the, the online delay here. There's no way I can hear them. No. Okay. Okay. And then it comes up in my comment section. Okay. If you have a question or a comment, um, just key it in and Jackie will relay it to me. Lección 12. Expresiones corrientes en el mercado mexicano regateando. El vendedor. ¿Qué se va usted a llevar, señorita? Carmencita. ¿Cuánto vale ese sarape? El vendedor. 140 pesos, señorita. Carmencita. Hombre, por Dios, eso sí es demasiado. El vendedor. Bueno, ¿y cuánto me da, señorita? I have a question. Sí, pregunta. Lynn Sibley says, I see you, but I don't know how to respond. There's a comment at the bottom of her live feed that she can hit and she can respond. Okay, there's a comment, comment button, comment button at, the, at the bottom of your feed. And that's where you can key in your question. If you, give the, if you make the questions in Spanish, um, Jackie will translate them back to English for me. <laughs> if you do it in English, she can read it for you. And the question is? I don't have a question Lynn hasn't submitted her question in English or in Spanish, apparently. <clears throat> Alan says, what page are you on? Alan 256, the beginning of Lección 12, Lesson 12. Okay, Alan got that. Does anyone else not have it? Please signal that you do not have it. It was sent by PDF online. So I take it everyone has it. Okay. The question. Alan, you had a question? Or Lynn? Lynn? Okay, no question. Can you key them, at the, key them in at the bottom? Is that it? Okay. <clears throat> so Carmencita says back to the guy when he says 140 pesos. Hombre, por Dios, eso sí es demasiado. El vendedor. Bueno, ¿cuánto me da, señorita? Pregunta. Karen, Karen says she don't normally have it. I mean, she does not have it, but she is not normally in your class. So, Karen, we will get you the um, PDF. PDF as long as you send me your email uh, to jmain at wccoag.org. Just send me your email, and I will send you the PDF format. Okay, that email is jmayne at WCCOAging dot O R G. That's J M A Y N E at W C C O A G I N G dot O R G. So that's your that's your method for Posting questions. So we're good. We can continue. Okay. 
everybody's on on with that. And did we have a question from Alan? An actual question? Okay, just a comment that you don't have the lesson. No, he hasn't. Okay. He just wanted to know what page you were on. Okay. And got it. Okay, so we're in the middle of a, a bargaining session here in the Mexican market. <clears throat> so <clears throat> he's priced this uh, serape at 140 pesos. And she said, whoa, that's way too much. And he says, bueno, cuánto me da, señorita? How much will you give me? 80 pesos, nada más. Pero fíjese, señorita, este serape, serape, serape me cuesta a mí más de 80 pesos. Se lo doy en 120. No gracias, says Carmencita, and she goes away. Se marcha. She leaves. Adiós. Señorita, no se vaya. Lléveselo en 95. Carmencita regresa. ¿No quiere dármelo en 80? Señorita, usted... No va a creerme cuando le digo que no estoy ganando nada en este negocio. Claro que no voy a creerle. ¿Con que 90 pesos es el último preso? precio? Precio? $95. Bueno, aquí tiene usted los $95 pesos. ¿Se lo envuelvo? Me hace el favor. So, does anyone not understand what's going on here? Okay. Page 257. Vocabulario, verbos nuevos. Roberto iba caminando a casa de Sara. Hacía mucho frío y por eso metió las manos en los bolsillos de su chaqueta. Eran las ocho y cuarto, y Roberto pensaba recoger a Sara a las ocho y media para llevarla al cine. Debían llegar al cine no muy tarde porque en la noche del sábado el cine rápidamente se llena de gente. Al llegar a la hermosa residencia de Sara, Roberto subió las escaleras y tocó el timbre. Y... Pero Sara no apareció. Roberto tuvo que es esperar 15 minutos, pero aunque hacía mucho frío, Roberto no se quejó porque le gusta mucho Sara. Cuando Sara por fin abrió la puerta, dijo, Ay, Roberto, me tienes que perdonar. Regresé muy tarde de la biblioteca y tuve que cambiarme de ropa, etc. No importa, dijo Roberto. ¿Quieres entrar? Gracias, no. Se hace tarde. Vamos a perder la película. Roberto le cogió la mano a Sara y los dos bajaron las escaleras rumbo al cine. Sara se quejó mucho del frío, porque a ella no le gusta. Caramba, dijo ella, me muero de frío. No te quejes tanto, dijo Roberto. Este frío me va a matar. En este momento pasó un taxi libre y Roberto decidió llevar a Sara, a Sara al cine en el taxi. ¡Taxi! gritó él. ¡Taxi! Al subir al taxi, a Sara le, se le cayó el bolso. Roberto lo recogió, pero cuando lo vio, dijo, ¡Se rompió! ¿No ves esta parte que está rota? No me importa eso, murmuró ella. El bolso estaba roto antes. En este momento, el taxi llegó al cine y los dos se bajaron del taxi. Oh. Question. So, Alan has a question, but he wants to make a response. He said, I remember when I was in Ecuador and bought some eggs for my host. The tiendas said, ochento and ochente, in response to how much. I drew a blank. 
ochenta, ochenta. She then said, un dollar. I gave her a dollar and she gave me 20 cents back. Senior moment. <laughs> <laughs> That is a good one. That was in Ecuador, right? Ecuador. And I, yes. I think they used the U.S. currency there. At least they did then. Don't know. Um, Lynn has a question. She okay. said, "Could you please translate the story into English at the end of sentences? It helps to clarify some words." Gracias. Okay, <clears throat> let's go to the, the dialogue in the market. Is that what we mean? Okay. <clears throat> en el mercado mexicano, regateando. In the Mexican market. Uh, um, discussing the price. In other words, bargaining. Regatear means to bargain. El vendedor is the, the vendor, and Carmencita, of course, is the lady who's the customer. <coughs> El vendedor says, ¿Qué se va a llevar, señorita? <coughs> now, look at this and say, w what does this mean? What are you going to take away? for yourself. Miss? That's where the se va a llevar usted. The se means for yourself. That's the reflexive. So what are you going to take? What are you going to get? Lady. Little lady. <clears throat> Carmencita says, ¿Cuánto vale ese sarape? Esa, ese sarape. How much does that sarape cost? Or what's it worth? She's really asking, what does it cost? <clears throat> Vendedor says, 140 pesos, señorita. 140 pesos, miss. Carmencita. Hombre, por Dios. Eso sí es demasiado. Man, by God, that's way too much. <clears throat> so the merchant says, well, how much will you give me, miss? Cuanto me da? Cuanto me da? <clears throat> and she says, ochenta pesos, nada más, eighty. Nothing more. <clears throat> El vendedor says, pero fíjese, señorita. But look, lady, <clears throat> this serape. Este sarape me cuesta a mí más de 80 pesos. This sarape costs me more than 80 pesos. I'll give it to you for 120. Se lo doy en 120. Carmencita says, no gracias. And she, she, mar she goes away. <clears throat> and he says, señorita, no se vaya. Don't go away. Don't leave. Llévese and 95. You can take it for 95. Carmencita regresa. She comes back. <clears throat> no quiere dármelo en 80? You won't give it to me for 80? <clears throat> the seller. Señorita usted. Señorita, usted no me va a creer cuando le digo que no estoy ganando nada en este negocio. Miss, you're not going to believe me when I tell you that I am not earning anything in this business, or in this deal, in this case, <coughs> in este negocio. <coughs> Carmencita, claro que no voy a creerle. Con que 90 pesos es el último precio? Of course I'm not going to believe you. So, uh, 90 pesos is the last price? 95. Says so this is 95. Okay. <clears throat> bueno, Carmencita says. Here you have 95. Aquí usted tiene usted los 95 pesos. <clears throat> Se lo envuelvo? Shall I wrap it up? 
Me hace el favor. Please. Make, do that. Questions? Comments? Uh, Alan says, why not compar? C-O-M-P-R-A-R? Instead of? I don't know. That's all he wrote. Comprar. Comprar? Comprar is to buy, right? Okay. But why not comprar in, 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 instead of what, Alan? Means to buy? Right. Why not trade instead of, I don't know. Trade? I don't know. It, 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 he didn't respond. So, and <coughs> two were on that last time. So right. There's a bit of a delay here, so that's why. <coughs> In other words, I think, Alan, you're asking about the very first line que se va a llevar? Why not comprar? Um, it's just what he said. He didn't. He didn't want to be explicit about buying. He said, "What are you going to take away? What are you? What do you want to? Uh, what do you want to get?" And that's when she asks, "How much?" And he says, "How much?" And she says, "That's too much." So forth and so on. Any other question? Okay, I guess we're accustomed now to this interactivity <laughs> with Jackie's uh, brave help here. Page 257, Vocabulario. <clears throat> Verbos nuevos. Does anyone know what that means? Verbos nuevos? Any response, Jackie? Yeah, they haven't seen it yet. Okay. We have one answer. What is, what is Sarape clay, please. Sarape, please. What is sarape? Yeah. Sarape is a garment. It's a, it's an over-the-shoulder garment. New verbs. New verbs is the title of this next page, right? Teresa says new verbs. Right. Okay, so everything you see in boldface on your page is a new verb. And the other verbs are not new and you should know them already, right? Okay. <clears throat> Roberto iba caminando a la casa de Sara. <clears throat> what do you think iba caminando means? Someone. That's not even a new verb. They haven't seen it yet. Okay. Now they just see it. No one has an answer? Someone explain the word Iba, the second word. Iba, I-B-A, Iba. Anyone know the verb infinitive and the tense? Hmm? 
no response from anyone. What if I told you that it was the preterite tense of ear? What would you say? Is that right? No answer? Is it a form of the verb ear? That's a yes or no question. I'd like everyone to answer that. Yes or no? Teresa says, oh, Levia, Le, Leviana says something is going on. You do not seem to get our message. Hmm, I got that message. Okay, Livy's Libby, uh, message came through, and uh, Teresa's came through. came through. But I'm not getting if they commented before that. Hmm. So, um, we'll just keep going. What, what was Teresa's comment again? Teresa's comment was, I see my comments on the screen, but you aren't getting them. Okay. But I just got that one. Okay. She got the comment on the comment not getting through. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, let's, let me just dissect this first sentence here in the reading. All right, the verbos nuevos. Roberto iba caminando. Iba is the imperfect of ear. So, Bob was going along, walking, a la casa de Sara, to Sarah's house. Iba is the imperfect tense. And that tells you what was going on, right? Mm -hmm. Hacía mucho frío. Hacía is the imperfect tense of hacer, and that's used with weather expressions. In this case, it was cold, very cold. Y por eso, therefore, metió las manos en los bolsillos de su chaqueta. He stuck his hands into the pockets of his jacket. Eran las ocho y cuarto. It was 8.30. No, 8, 8.15. Quarter after 8. Y Roberto pensaba recoger a Sara. And <clears throat> Bob, we'll call him in this case, was was intending to pick up Sarah at 8.30 a las ocho y media para llevarla al cine to take her to the movie. Debían llegar al cine no muy tarde. They should be getting to the movie no later, <coughs> not very late, excuse me. Porque en la noche del sábado, because on Saturday night, 
El cine rápidamente se llena de gente. The movie fills up quickly. Fills with people quickly. Any question about that so far? Al llegar a la hermosa residencia de Sara, <clears throat> upon arriving at the beautiful residence of Sarah, Roberto subió las escaleras. Bob, we'll call him, <clears throat> went up the stairs y tocó el timbre. Literally, tocar is to touch, but in this case, um, it's used for musical instruments, and in this case, the timbre, which is the doorbell, is analogous to a musical instrument. Teresa wants to know, what is the infinitive, infinitive of Lena? Lena. Llena. Llenar. Llenar. Llenar is the infinitive of llena. Okay. <coughs> so, uh, so <coughs> what we have here is a is a reflexive use, which translates into the passive voice in English. El cine se llena. The movie house fills up. We would say in English. That's why it's reflexive. Does that clarify it, Teresa? Yeah, there's a delay in this. Um. Any other questions so far? Okay, no response. Llenar is to fill and because the movie house is being filled, That's that explains why there's a reflexive. The, the movie house is filled or fills itself, fills up. How we, we could say it a number of ways in English. Next sentence. Al llegar a la hermosa residencia de Sara, upon arriving at the beautiful residence of Sara's beautiful residence, Roberto subió las escaleras. Does anyone know the um, infinitive for a subio? The bold faced word. So far, no response. Subir. Look at the bottom of the page. You'll see all the infinitives that are new in boldface that reflect the boldface words in the text. And if you didn't know it, you could have looked it up, right? <laughs> but that would take too much time. What you have to do is begin to use the context to make educated guesses as to the meaning of the words. Subió las escaleras, okay? You know what escaleras are. And if you don't, then you look that word up and you figure out that he did something with the stairs. 
So you must have either gone up or down, right? He <clears> tocó <throat> el timbre. He, he, he played the doorbell. <laughs> Actually, he touched the doorbell, or he pushed the doorbell, we'll say. In <clears throat> Pero Sara no apareció. Sarah did not appear. Oh, my goodness. This guy's standing out in the rain. And <clears throat> Roberto tuvo que esperar 15 minutos. Remember the expression tener que plus an infinitive, meaning to have to? Well, here we have the preterite tense. Roberto had to. <clears throat> Esperar 15 minutos. Pero aunque hacía mucho frío, although it was very cold, Roberto no se quejó. Porque le gusta mucho. Sara. <clears throat> Quejarse. That's a new verb. <clears throat> it's one you'll, you'll, you'll come to use because it means to complain. <clears throat> so, Roberto did not complain. Why? Because he likes Sarah a lot. He's willing to put up with the cold and the weight. Cuando Sara por fin abrió la puerta, dijo. Finally, when Sara opened the door, she said, Ay, Roberto, me tienes que perdonar. Oh, Bobby, you have to forgive me. Regresé muy tarde de la biblioteca. Y tuve que cambiarme de ropa, etc. Regresé is from regresar to return. I came back very late from the library and I had to change clothes, etc. Now, we all know what etc. must mean here. You know, do the makeup and the perfume and all this other stuff, right? No importa, dijo Roberto. It doesn't matter. It's not important. Importar is to matter or to be important. ¿Quieres entrar? Gracias, no. Se hace tarde. Vamos a perder la película. <clears throat> Want to come in? No, thanks. It's getting late. We're going to lose the movie. We're going to miss the movie in this case. Perder. Roberto le cogió la mano a Sara y los dos bajaron las escaleras. Now, <clears throat> Roberto took her by the hand <clears throat> and the two of them did what? Bajaron las escaleras. Earlier, Roberto subió las escaleras, but now los dos bajaron. <clears throat> Subir, bajar. Eh? Subir, bajar. <clears throat> Rumbo al cine. Rumbo a means on the way to. <clears throat> Sara se quejó mucho del frío. Quejarse, remember? From up above, Roberto no se quejó. Bobby didn't complain because he, he really likes Sarah a lot. <clears throat> but here, <clears throat> Sara se quejó mucho del frío. Porque a ella no le gusta. Sarah complained a lot about the cold because she doesn't like it. Caramba, dijo ella, me muero del frío. 
Doggone it. Dang it. Darn it. She said, I'm dying of cold. No te quejes tanto, dijo Roberto. Don't complain so much. Este frío me va a matar. This cold is going to kill me. En este momento pasó un tase libre. Just then, a, 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 a free taxi. Not free in the sense of not without cost. It just means it's not, not occupied. Y Roberto decidió llevar a Sara al cine en el taxi. So Roberto decides he's going to take her to the movie in the, with the taxi. Taxi, gritó él. Taxi. So he's handing up. Taxi, taxi. <clears throat> al subir al taxi. Now, what did uh, Roberto do earlier to las escaleras? Subió las escaleras. <clears throat> subir y bajar means to get into and out of some sort of conveyance, in this case, the taxi. So they go get up into the taxi and they'll get down to the taxi when they get where they're going. So subir y bajar literally mean going up and going down, but in this case it's not the staircase, it's just getting into the taxi and out. <clears throat> Al subir al taxi, a Sara se le cayó el bolso. Let's look at this for a minute. <clears throat> al subir, upon getting into the taxi, a Sara se le cayó el bolso. <clears throat> Caer, you know, to fall or to... Se le cayó. Se cayó el bolso. The the her purse fell. But how do we know it's her first her purse? Because it's the le. Se le cayó el bolso. Se refers to el bolso and le refers to asara. Asara se le cayó el bolso. In other words, <clears throat> Sarah dropped her purse. Roberto lo cogió. Pero cuando lo vio, dijo. <clears throat> Bobby grabbed it. And <clears throat> when he saw it, he said, Se rompió. It broke. Or it tore. Either way. No ves esta parte que está rota? Don't you see this part that's uh, torn or broken? <clears throat> Romper means both tear and break. No me importa eso, murmuró ella. El bolso estaba ropo, roto antes. <coughs> en este momento el taxi llegó al cine y los dos se bajaron del taxi. So, who wants to say what that means? En, este mom en ese momento el taxi llegó al cine y los dos se bajaron del taxi. The second part of that. Los dos se bajaron del taxi. Someone put that in English for us in your comment. The two. Both of them got out of the taxi. Right. Hmm? That's what uh, Livy and Teresa says. Okay. Good answers. <clears throat> Thank you. And Alan said the two got down from the taxi. Right. Presuming getting down from means to get out of. And it's just that older vehicles are, were higher, and that's why we have the subir y bajar. Uh, just remains and in getting into and getting out of a vehicle.
in the 19th century, <coughs> they had what were called coche simon, uh, like a Simon car, <laughs> which was a higher vehicle, uh, horse drawn. <coughs> but it was the equivalent or the analog to today's taxis. Okay, uh, I, want, uh, I want more questions. And I want everyone to make sure you memorize your new vocabulary, which is all in boldface on this page. Some of it is um, is is incorporated into the text, and some of it some of it not at the end of the um, at the at the bottom of the page. So, who wants to uh, venture? <coughs> A meaning for meter, the first one in the list at the bottom. was used in the second line of the text. Metió las manos. Excuse me? To put? Question one. To put, yes, in the, in the sense, but to put in or insert. Okay? It usually has the, um, the, the meaning of inserting. We say put put his hands in his pockets, but when I read it and translated it, I said he stuck his hands in his pockets, which is kind of a, the way we, we, we might say it in English. Recoger. <clears throat> Recoger is to gather or to get Coher is to get, but in a little different sense. Recoher is just uh, get and, and, and take away. Llenar. <clears throat> in the text, el cine rápidamente se llena de gente. Llenar means no guesses. Well, what happens on Saturday night at the movie <clears throat> rapidly, rapidamente se llena de gente. Llenar means to fill. So when it referred to el cine se llena, it fills up, it gets filled. <clears throat> Subir. Go up.
quejarse. Quejarse is to complain. And if you complain, you have to complain about something, right? That's what the day is all about. <clears throat> Yo, por ejemplo, me quejo del silencio de ustedes. I, for example, complain about your silence. <clears throat> me quejo del silencio aquí. <clears throat> So the second word in this list at the bottom was recoger, and the first one, first word in the last line is coger, okay? So what do they mean? Coger means to get, recoger means to gather, in a way. <clears throat> it can mean get, it's the same thing. That's what Roberto was doing, he was going to get Sarah, or gather her, collect her. <clears throat> bajar is the antonym of subir. Subir, bajar. <clears throat> Morir. <clears throat> and the O changes to UE when that syllable, syllable is stressed in the conjugation. So at the end of that short paragraph, in the middle of the page, <clears throat> Sarah says, Me muero del f de frío. Me muero de frío. I'm dying of the cold. And similarly, she says two lines down, Este frío me va a matar. Este frío me va a matar. This cold is going to kill me. Morir is to die, matar is to kill. Gritar is to shout. Romper is to break or to tear. And if I tear my hair out, <laughs> me rompo el pelo de la cabeza. Okay, for the next class, I would like you to write answers to all of the questions in the first half of page 258, Lección 12. Write your answers and bring them to class. And Ellen said 50% of all these comments do not seem to be going through. I guess we'll work on that for next session. Uh, okay, uh, looks like um, at least, at least half of your comments don't seem to be traveling all the way through. So that's uh, what I would like you to do is, um, while while you're while you're on this subject, write them down and bring them to class the next time, so we can go over them again. Make sure we've covered the material thoroughly. <clears throat> There's a lot of new material here, as you can see. You've got a whole page of all new. Uh, vocabulary in use and uh, all of these uh, new vocabulary items happen to be verbs don't they so uh, they're very important as I as I have said repeatedly to all of my classes the verb is everything in Spanish it tells you everything. It tells you who's the subject. It tells you what tense it is. It tells you all kinds of stuff. And it can be used with different English translations sometimes. Like subir means to go up or get into a vehicle. Bajar is the opposite. I think our hour is up. So we'll see you on uh, next Monday. Monday at 10 o'clock.